Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's the day before the fight, October 11th, 2024. Let's talk about sports in general, but I'll touch on the fight. We're talking about, of course, in alphabetical order, since both of these guys have titles, Baturbia versus Bevel. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I personally feel, and I'm biased, I personally feel that my subscribers are among the sharpest people online. And a subscriber called me out. I was running off at the mouth on a previous video where I said, look, you know, a lot of Paterbia fans were out there. I was responding to comments and I was saying, look, if your guy is, you know, the big bad wolf out there, right? Figuratively speaking, like the cartoon character in back of me. If his power is so inescapable that a skilled boxer like a beevil won't be able to avoid his punches, then what's he doing as the underdog in this fight? And an astute subscriber then responded and said, Dwyer, you know, you can't get on here. My words, not his, but the general theme was you can't get on here and talk about your belief that sometimes the betting lines are wrong. That the public narrative is just one narrative and then tell us that we shouldn't believe in our guy simply because of the betting line. You know, agreed. <laughs> I, was, I was off base. I apologize for my comments. Right? The whole point of me being online here is to spot betting line inefficiencies. So I, I can't hypocritically use the betting spread to argue that one fighter is better than the other. I'll agree with that sentiment. Simply put, I stand corrected. Let me just point out too that I do believe in what I call casino heights. Right? It's like a bank heist, only you walk in the front door, everyone sees you, you go to the counter, they give you a lot of money. Right? Um, years ago, there was a fight, uh, Roy Jones against James Tony. Um, had I bet on that fight, I would have gotten it wrong. Um, the Roy Jones crowd, like the Paterbiev crowd here, thought that the betting spread was off, thought that their guy was ready. Thought that Jones would be simply too fast for Tony. Both guys now, of course, are in the Hall of Fame. And they were vindicated. Right? Recently, uh, Joe Joyce was fighting at home against a lesser-known Jili Zhang. I just knew, whatever the line was, that Jili Zhang was the betting side of the play. Right? And let's just say the fight turned out the way I thought it would. And um, I believe that betting lines are often wrong. So, this Baturbi of Beeble fight is interesting because you have two groups. As I make this video, a casino I just checked with online here has Baturbi of as a plus 150. What's interesting is, let's just say, a sizable block of Baturbi of people believe that the line's just dead wrong. They believe their guy is going to dominate and win by stoppage. Then you have the Beevil side of the ledger. I'm telling you, a big block of the Beevil people are saying, look, it's about time. Baturbia fought someone with legs and defense. Right? And they feel that Baturbia is going to get undressed. So, if you're going to be watching the fight live, just understand the first few rounds are going to vindicate one side or the other. We understand there are other outcomes, right? There is a possibility that Beevil gets caught late. There's even a possibility that Beevil is just too fast for Baturbiev and ultimately stops him, right? Just understand that we all disagree on this fight. It's going to be an excellent fight. I do believe the public narrative is simply one narrative here. This fight is an oddity because unlike 
some of the fights I mentioned, this fight is relatively evenly matched in the odds market. But yet, the fan groups have very different outcomes, right? The Paterbiev crowd knows their guy has never gone the distance as a professional. They're not expecting this fight to go the distance. They're not expecting Paterbiev to win by some razor-close margin, right? If it does go the distance, they're expecting Paterbiev to win because he's gotten a few knockdowns, right? The Beevil side of the ledger thinks that this is Canelo 2, right? That Beevil's going to take over the fight. Then it's going to be obvious by the ninth round who's won the fight. Right? In situations like that, I encourage people to look at the prop bets. Right? You know, will Baturbiev get a knockdown in the fight? If you're on the Baturbiev side of the ledger, that might be the best bet to pursue. Because if he does get a knockdown, understand you've won that bet. You don't even have to wait to see if Bevel gets off the canvas and is able to take control of the fight later. You're already cashing the ticket. Right, so take a look at prop bets. Um, I've discussed props on this fight in an earlier video. I won't repeat that here. Let me talk about some other things. In the NBA, and I'm a Nick fan, right? Um... Uh, I was raised on Nick basketball. The Knicks have gotten Carl Anthony Towns, who's interesting. Right? Look at a big man with that three point shooting capability. This is a guy who, of course, was picked first in the draft in his draft class. Tall guy, has an outside game, can get boards. Right? Highly skilled can beat you with his back to the basket. Let me also say, Paul George, who's now with the 76ers, is one of the league's better defenders. Right? He's a great athlete. He really is an unsung superstar. Now, what does all this mean? Carl Anthony Towns to the Knicks, Paul George joining Embiid, um... What does it mean? Folks, it means that from this gambler's seat, the team that's going to win the East, unless guys get injured, are the Boston Celtics. Folks, Boston really has a little bit of a mini dynasty, don't they? Um, they gave away a lead in the finals to the Golden State Warriors. Denver then wins the NBA championship the next year. Boston's back. Even without Porzingis playing a lot of the year. Boston's back in the NBA Finals. They had over 60 wins. You looked at the team, you understand that this is that rear defensive team. Right? You know, you really have to think back to the bad boys. Isaiah, James Edwards, Bill Lambeer. Uh, this is that rear defensive team that can suffocate you. Right? The Bulls. Just understand, in the East, it's the same as it ever was. Carl Anthony Towns, he wasn't one of the stronger defenders on the Minnesota Timberwolves. The real MVP, and I say P meaning person in the Eastern Conference, is Brad Stevens, the management Swingali for the Boston Celtics. Right, so the first bet I'm going to make, I haven't laid down any money yet, but the first bet I'm going to make in the NBA will be the Boston Celtics to win the Eastern Conference. Right, you don't win a championship by just adding parts, right? The uh, team actually has to gel. I know Brad Stevens has gone out there, gotten Drew Holiday and other guys. Okay, great. But the important thing with the Celtics is they have gelled, right? You can't just add up the talent on the roster. 
and say, oh, okay, this team now has a higher sum than that team. That's not the way it works, right? Just to understand, the chemistry in the backcourt of Boston, White and Holiday, beats any other backcourt in the Eastern Conference, right? I haven't even gotten to, you know, Brown or Tatum. Right, and of course, Porzingis is that big man who himself can step outside. Now, these other teams can have ins with players, they can have agents operating as GMs. Okay, good for them. Right, but finding chemistry like this is elusive. Take the Golden State Warriors. In their heyday, folks, that team was seamless. Right, you were looking at that team and they had defensive stoppers like Igudala. They had not just Curry, but you had Clay Thompson. You had the Splash Brothers. You had the defensive stopper of the team, Draymond Green. I don't even think that team knew what they had until they saw all of them on the court at the same time. Understand, too, you have the Splash Brothers and then by chance you have a coach who for his career hit something like 40% from three. In other words, you not only had a team of shooters, but the shooting actually extended to the coaching staff. So when KD got to Golden State, right, you had people in the building who understood KD shot, right? Because Steve Kerr was there. I believe Chris Mullen was still involved with the team. You know, that was a shooter's paradise. Folks, you don't get that by happenstance, right? It, you know, I can't just show up and say, hey, let's get Paul George, and then suddenly everything works. That's not the way it is. Let's face it, too. With Philly, Joel Embiid. Embiid's one of the best players I've seen in a long time. He shouldn't have won his MVP. That should have been a Joker MVP. But I concede, in his MVP year, he was one of the very best players in the league. Right? He has an outside shot. He's actually a decent passer. He's not close to Joker as a passer, but he's a decent passer. Right? He's a guy who can dominate you in the paint when he wants. He's one of the league's best scorers. You and I know right now, it's October 11th. Right? The regular season has not started. You and I know right now he's going to miss at least 15 games. Can we, can we just be real here? Right? He has more in common with Jamal Mashburn than he does Michael Jordan. Right? Some players just can't play every game. Right? Anthony Richardson, the quarterback for the Colts right now, is this kind of athlete. So Philly, as is often the case with Philly, right? And I remember when Philly was the big bad wolf, right? I remember Bobby Jones, Caldwell Jones, Moses, Doc, Tony, Cheeks, right? Folks, right now you have a Philly team where the superstar is going to miss 15 games, 20 games, whatever Embiid's numbers are. He might not even be eligible for postseason awards, given the new NBA rules, because you have to play a certain number of games for that. Right? This is the big man who's more like Anthony Davis. Yes, I'm taking shots here. Then, you know, a guy who you know is going to be out there. Who, if you're going to hunt down a team in your conference that won more than 60 games the preceding year, right? Just blew through the finals. If you're going to hunt them down, you know you have your superstar on the court. Isn't that what the Bulls knew back in the Jordan era? Folks, Philly's not going to know that. You know that, right? As for the Knicks, you know, Carl Anthony Towns is a blessed shooter. How many games is he going to be on the court? Right? I thought Jalen Brunson, right? I love Brunson. 
Brunson works awfully hard. But last year you were looking at the Knicks and you thought, wow, you know, Brunson just doesn't have anything close around him to what the Boston Celtics have. Right? The Celtics come at you in waves. Right? Jalen Brown could dominate a series. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, he's looking good, but he's not even the best player on the team. Right? You have guys who are in their second tour of duty with the Celtics, right? Al Horford. And you're looking at Al and you realize that Al understands how good he has it. Right? He left the team. Now he's back. He understands with this team he can get jewelry. The Celtics not only have better players than many of these teams and better chemistry, they're deep. They even have a better bench. Right? So Bob Myers is really the person responsible. In, in my opinion, Bob Myers, Jerry West. People forget Jerry was there. Jerry famously said, look, if you trade Clay Thompson for, forget the guy's name, um, Kevin Love, then I'm going to quit. They kept Clay Thompson. Of course, that was the birth of the Splash Brothers. Well, folks, look at Brad Stevens and understand the value of a great GM. Right? You hope, since the Celtics are being sold this year, apparently the uh, real power behind the throne was the father of the owner who himself owed part of the Celtics and didn't like all these big contracts being dished out to all these players. Right? That's why the team's being sold. Just understand what that has done is it's locked in team chemistry right now. Boston might be on the front end of a run. They certainly have the jump, in my opinion, on the Eastern Conference. Now, the Western Conference is a different animal, right? The Western Conference has some ringers out there who might be ready to take the next step, right? I need to have people look closely at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right, Chet Hulgren, <laughs> folks, we might just be getting started there. Right, that OKC team is dangerous. I'll concede that. If everyone stays healthy, the Denver Nuggets are just a year removed from their rings. Right? Let's just say, while I believe the moment has passed for Golden State and for the Los Angeles Lakers... I'm curious to see if Phoenix gets any defense. Right? Things are a little bit open in the West. I'll concede that Boston would have a tougher time winning the Western Conference. But in the East, they stand alone. You know, I personally feel that the way to make money betting is by taking futures. Right? I prefer to take talented long shots than favorites, where all I'm getting is a plus 300, right? But let's not kid ourselves. If everyone on Boston, and this is a big ask, because it didn't happen last year. People forget Porzingis was out, and he's an important player. Just imagine winning 60 games, more than 60, without Porzingis for part of the year. If Boston can stay healthy, folks, they're lapping the field in the Eastern Conference. Right, even with Paul George, even with Carl Anthony Towns, right, even with an offensively blessed Indiana Pacer team. That's how I see it. My first futures play is going to be on Boston simply to win the East. Then I'll fool around with other bets. Father Time waits for no one. Unfortunately for the Warriors. Um, and the Warriors have talent, don't get me wrong. But let's just say Steph Curry no longer has an in his prime Clay Thompson to take some of the heat away from him. Right? Andrew Wiggins seems to have peaked. 
and is that player who has gotten a ring, who has other things going on in his life, I'm not sure if he can rededicate and rejuvenate himself. Right? With LeBron, you know, I think Kevin Hart said it best, right? He said, he was talking about football, but let's just say he said, hey, they want someone who can run a 40, <laughs> not someone who is 40. Understand, LeBron needs help. I'm not sure if Bronny is the answer. Right? So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the West. But in the East, I, I have little doubt. I like the Boston Celtics. This analysis will change, of course. If Jason Tatum, who just played in the Olympics, um, tears a knee is hurt, can't play, if Jalen Brown is hurt, can't play, if suddenly Drew Holiday, who was in the Olympics, key player on that team, by the way, if Drew Holiday suddenly starts showing his age, okay, we'll revisit this. But as long as there's a three-point line, as long as the Celtics have the defensive intensity that they have, Folks, there's no one close to them in the Eastern Conference. Those are my thoughts this October 11th. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand, when I was a kid, I attended Nick games. Um, you know, I know Nick fans are anxious. They didn't sign Carl Anthony Towns as a free agent. They actually had to give up Randall. <laughs> Folks. You're giving up a lot of intensity under the basket when you do that. I know he's been injured of late and stuff like that. Um, let's just say we traded for Carl Anthony Towns and we gave up a lot in that deal. Let me hear from you in the comments section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.